Welcome to lecture 34 of uh, Power System Protection course. In the last lecture, that is lecture 33, we concluded uh, the numerical relay uh, techniques. In fact, we are discussing different algorithms useful to extract the phasor information and which is in fact useful for numerical relaying technique, relaying up, relaying uh, approach. And we concluded that uh, in the last class, we, we are talking about the LSQ method. In LSQ method, we have seen uh, one method proposed by uh, Sachdev. And in fact, where we found seven unknowns and if we have simultaneous equations and from the equations how we can find out the unknown quantities like and we can estimate the phasors. So similarly there are many other techniques also available in the literature and one such technique is also your FFT, FFT method. So we will not talk more further about those things. And we concluded, in fact, the numerical uh, relaying technique. And in this this lecture, we'll discuss about the circuit breaker, because we have seen that circuit breaker is very important element in the power system protection. But because it is very much essentially required to make the circuit and break the circuit. So let us talk about and. Circuit breaker almost is it is equivalent to a switch switch which in fact useful but a switch having the control make a control uh, functionality is called the circuit breaker. So let us see then what is the circuit breaker and how there are different types of circuit breaker how it is useful in the relaying power system protection purposes. So already we have seen this figure as you are seeing in the slide. This in this this figure is showing a, a simple, a typical uh, protection arrangement where we have CTs and PTs. They are in fact feeding the signal, current and voltage signal to the relay, and the relay in fact it compares the measured value with the threshold value, and then it sends the trip command to the circuit breaker as you can see here in this rate so this is your relay it is giving the trip signal to the circuit breaker and then circuit breaker acts accordingly it, it makes and breaks the circuit okay so this is the control mechanism uh, behind this uh, making and breaking the circuit this is a transmission line right so now we'll focus on the operation of circuit breaker, different types of circuit breaker and operation of circuit breaker, types of CV and operation of CV. Right. So let us then start with the evolution of circuit breaker, how it is evolved. You know this, how in fact it is evolved. Circuit breaker, so what is this circuit breaker? So gear in fact refers to a set of equipment needed for a particular activity okay. and switch gear is a general term which refers to any equipment used for carrying out the switching operation in the power system that is called the switch, switch gear right. It is a general term and the equipment in fact related to this they all comes under the switch gear and it is useful for switching operation of the power system. Out of all switch gears, circuit breaker happens, circuit breaker in fact happens to be the most intriguing, interesting, right, challenging, complex and costly equipment. The circuit breaker in fact, it is very interesting equipment and also it is challenging and its uh, structure in fact complex complexities involved will go through this 
and high voltage circuit breakers have evolved from a simple switching arrangement like knife switch to the modern SF6 and vacuum circuit breakers. Indeed, at low voltages and currents, one fails to appreciate the phenomenon of interrupting a circuit. In a low voltage circuit, like let us say in our household, we don't require a circuit breaker because the voltage and current associated is very small and therefore a simple switch is useful to fulfill the switching phenomena. But in case of high voltage circuit where the voltage is in some kV like above 200 kV, 220 kV, 400 kV right. Though in those circuits it is difficult to switch or the, the switching phenomena becomes difficult because we know our circuits are involved with RLC components and it causes in fact a lot of stored energy is there in our system and when we are making and breaking a circuit the energy is being released and that releases in the form of arc so that arcing phenomena in fact uh, ordinary switches cannot bear those arcs very huge arc produces during making and breaking of the high voltage circuit. As the system voltages and currents go on increasing, it becomes clear that the design of circuit breaker needs careful attention from the point of view of impact of the switching operation on the power system, safety of the circuit breaker itself and the safety of the operating personnel. Okay, so three things mentioned here. One is your safety of the circuit breaker, safety of the operating personnel and the switching operation of the power system should be safe. Right? So now we can see here the knife switch. In fact, this is the concept from where the circuit breaker evolved. Right? This is the beginning or this is the initial point how the circuit breaker evolved. We can see here, uh, this is a knife like structure and this is the moving contact. This one is the moving contact and this is your fixed contact. Okay. And here the moving contact, these are the two terminals of two, uh, where the conductors are connected. So here one side of the conductor is connected, right? And other side is of the conductor is connected here. Now when this moving contact, it has a handle and through handle when it is made closed or made, made inside the fixed contact because in the fixed contact we have a groove like structure you can see here. This is your fixed contact and in this groove, this moving contact is inserted right through the handle and then both the, both the conductors or both the sides it is connected through this knife right. So this is how it works. Another question is how speed it operates because it has a handle and we are doing it manually. So the, obviously the speed matters because unless we do it very fast, the switching is very fast, the arc will be more because as we take more time for switching operation, the arc will be more. And it will be in fact very furious. So therefore, the switching phenomena should be very fast in action. And in order to make it faster, a spring is connected. It is gradual evolution. It is shown here the gradual evolution of this knife switch. It one spring is connected, which in fact when we will open this circuit using this knife uh, through the handle, the spring will give a force it will release the force when it will, with the, because of the stored energy during the closing of the switch. When we will close this moving contact, the spring will be compressed and it will store the energy, right? When we will open it, it will release the energy and it will help us to break the contact or open the contact very fast. So in that way, it will help us to make the operation faster. And similarly, the moving contact also is being 
pressed between the two contacts which are being pressed by the springs these are the this is the fixed contact the whole arrangement is the fixed contact and the moving contact comes inside or come in between these two contacts which are being pressed by two springs huge springs right so that is how it makes little advanced arrangement of this knife switch and from this mechanism in fact the mechanism of using the stored energy during the closing of the switch is in fact used in the circuit breaker design right so we can see here the circuit breaker interaction with various entities right so this is your circuit breaker you can see here and this this is your circuit breaker and the mechanical link is this is your fixed contact and this is your moving contact right now there are many uh, factors in fact they are interacting with circuit breaker operation right so you can see here first and utmost uh, impact is done is, is is over because of the rlc parameter which is lying both the side of the circuit breaker contacts right so both the side of the circuit breaker we have networks high voltage networks consisting of r l and c elements and it has a great impact in producing the arc so therefore the medium of arc is plays very important role in extinguishing the arc which is produced in the circuit breaker right and itself in the arc phenomena itself the there are many uh, many theories involved in it so out of those theories one is plasma physics aerodynamics of plasma fluid dynamics of plasma so these things are also involved we will not talk much detail about these things about this plasma physics but lot of theories involved in it and also we you know the material for fixed and moving contact for optimum management of arc so all the material cannot handle the arc like therefore the materials which we choose to design these contacts it plays very important role right so then the shape of the contacts from the view point of arc formation fluid dynamics heat transfer heat transfer magnetic blowout these things plays important role in designing the shape of the contact of the circuit breaker okay so these are the various uh, entities which interact within and outside the circuit breaker so within the circuit breaker the contact design the material used for the contact and the plasma physics plays important role and in the outside world these rlc parameters of the network in the high voltage environment it plays important role right this is what how the interaction takes place now we'll see how the evolution took place uh, from a knife switch to a circuit breaker you can see here the evolution here the knife switch gradually it is evolved as the spring loaded knife switch right and then it is evolved as air circuit breaker where the medium is air and then it was gradually evolved as bulk oil circuit breaker then from bulk oil circuit breaker to the minimum oil circuit breaker then from minimum oil circuit breaker to air blast circuit breaker then from air blast circuit breaker to sf6 circuit breaker then finally the evolution took place and finally the vacuum circuit breaker came into picture so we'll see all these circuit breakers and how the medium plays important role and the mechanism of operation also plays important role in different circuit breakers let us then see the behavior of air gases and vacuum at high voltages and the high voltage condition how this medium because the medium as I, i have shown in the last figure the air and gases like sf6 
and vacuum how it plays important role so uh, if we'll see the high vacuum in fact causes this much of pressure the pressure is around 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 torr so one torr we know is it is sorry one atmospheric pressure is equal to 760 mm of uh, mercury right so and 1 mm mercury is known as 1 tar so so here it is defined 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 tar to 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 tar the pressure will be for high vacuum and for very high vacuum the pressure will be 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 tar to 1 into 10 to the power minus 8 tar okay for ultra high vacuum condition your pressure will be 1.1 into 10 to the minus 9 tar and below less than that okay so now you can see the variation of this uh, how the voltage level okay how this for different pressure level what much of voltage level it can withstand right you can see here the 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 curve here it is suddenly drastically decreasing here with increasing the pressure but here as we'll see from the pressure of 10 to the power minus 3 bar per bar centimeter and if of that it is in fact increasing linearly the voltage sustaining capability right so you can see that after 10 to the power minus 3 when we'll pressure increase the pressure right bar centimeter then the voltage sustaining capability is increasing so this is the dielectric strength it is showing the dielectric strength of air as a function of pressure right so this is dielectric strength means volt per centimeter right so this is volt per centimeter of air and when the pressure is increasing in fact after 10 to the power minus 3 it is increasing uh, linearly almost linearly and below that uh, it is in fact decreasing very drastically right okay so now you can see the influence of inter electrode gap on dielectric strength so inter electrode gap means we know the for air the dielectric strength is around 30 kV per centimeter so you can see in the figure so 1 centimeter is around 10 millimeter so the distance is projected here in the millimeter unit so for 10 millimeter for air it is around 30 kV per centi 30 kV right okay and similarly if we'll see is the same distance between the electrodes 1 centimeter or 10 millimeter for SF6, it will be more, right? It is around 60 kb per centimeter, 60 kb, right? And again, if we'll see the oil, oil will have around 110, 110 kb, right? And if we'll go to vacuum for the same distance, for one centimeter, it will go up to around 170 kb, right? Similarly, if we'll match it for the SF6 for SF6 it will be around 250 kV for the uh, 1 centimeter distance right so that means for SF6 your dielectric strength is highest it is up to coming up to 250 kV per centimeter and as we increase the pressure okay as we sorry as we increase the distance between the electrodes obviously the the kV will increase right but if we'll find for per centimeter or 10 millimeter uh, the SF6 is giving the highest result it is 250 kb per centimeter and similarly if we'll see the deionization time as a function of pressure for various gases we can see here the deionization time in fact plays very important role and the deionization time should be as less as possible because we need to deionize that air as soon as there is arc and 
it needs to be deionized because because of the arc when arc production the air gets ionized and it needs to be deionized to further interrupt the arc <coughs> so therefore this deionization time plays very important role now you can see the plots here so the deionization time is plotted with respect to the pressure for different gases if we'll consider air it has the highest deionization time and similarly helium argon h2 hydrogen and co2 all gases have been plotted but all other gases have certain disadvantages therefore all gases we cannot choose right and air obviously is one of the best chosen medium for extinguishing the arc even if the deionization time is high for air right but if we see the sf6 as it we can see in the below figure sf6 is plotted for sf6 as the pressure is increasing your deionization time is remaining same unlike air in case of air your as the pressure is increasing your deionization time is also increasing but in case of sf6 it is remaining constant even if we are increasing the pressure right and it is it is maintaining its constancy at 0.25 microsecond and it is less as compared to air where for air it is for 5 5 bar it is around 100 130 microsecond for sf6 it is coming around 0.25 microsecond and it is maintaining the constancy even the pressure is increased so therefore sf6 is the best medium as we can say so let us then discuss the switch isolator and circuit breaker what is the difference between these three elements or three uh, elements used in power system uh, circuits switch isolator and circuit breaker they seems to be similar because their operation or the the main objective of these three element system switch also makes and breaks the circuit isolator also makes and breaks the circuit circuit breaker also makes and breaks the circuit so what is the difference then so this is a circuit breaker we can see here the complexity uh, inside the circuit breaker the circuit breaker in fact it is it is associated with the control circuit we call it the trip circuit and inside the trip circuit we can see we have a trip coil and we have a source we have a battery which in fact operates the trip coil and we have an auxiliary contact then manual trip contact then the contact for relay operation right so this is your circuit breaker contact and inside that we have one fixed contact which remains fixed and other one is your movable contact which moves as the circuit breaker operates for breaking or, or making the circuit so this is your relay and if we'll say this is a over current relay so this over current relay after getting the current signal from the circuit it compares with the threshold value and then sends the trip signal to the relay contact sorry to the trip contact and which is a no contact no contact means normally open contact it remains normally open when it gets the signal from the relay it closes right and as soon as this contact is closed then your trip circuit is closed and therefore your trip coil operates and your Uh, moving contacts moves to open the circuit this is the basic phenomena of a circuit breaker uh, similarly if you want to man manually trip the circuit breaker then you have to manually close this switch which is put in parallel with the uh, relay contact right this is also a no contact normally open contact similarly another switch we have which is the auxiliary contact which in fact moves from the normally closed to open as the circuit breaker contacts open when it it opens so it makes the nc the normally closed contact here to normal to open a condition right 
and this battery is important in fact right so this is the complexity the basic basic structure we can see right from this from this diagram okay now we'll see this is the conceptual diagram showing the organization of the trip circuit of the circuit breaker so now we can see how important is circuit breaker and what is the importance of other elements like isolator and switches so in this circuit we can see this is a high voltage circuit where we have isolators and we have switches right load switches and we have earthing switch also there and we have one circuit breaker also in place right and finally it is connected to the load okay now when whenever suppose some fault happens the isolator cannot operate directly or any load switch also cannot operate directly only we will depend on, on the circuit breaker operation so when the circuit breaker opens then other switches like isolator and load switches they open right so therefore in circuit breaker plays important similarly when we are closing a circuit or we are connecting a load to a high voltage circuit first of all we need to close the isolators under no load condition and then the circuit breaker is being closed to make the circuit so this is how this operates and in fact circuit breaker plays very important role where isolator that you can see here there are two isolators both the side of the circuit breaker in fact it after the circuit breaker closes or opens these isolators the are closed right so when the circuit breaker is open then the isolators isolates the circuit breaker and then the circuit breaker remains safe because circuit breaker is a costly equipment in the power system it should not be damaged at any cost right then the working of the load switch is in fact load switch operates under normal load condition it opens and closes and earthing switch in fact it only operates when the circuit breaker opens or closes right okay so and this earthing switch in fact required to discharge the charges stored in the equipment or in the high voltage equipment or high voltage circuit so that when we are opening a circuit right when the circuit is opened by the circuit breaker it is very important to earth the high voltage equipment because sometimes the the charges are being stored in the high voltage circuit because of the lc component right so therefore it is very important to earth first and then we'll work on it if any work is there like maintenance work is there so first it needs to be earthed when the it when it is discharged completely then the personal they go for maintenance or go for repairing activity okay so this is how it works now we can see the various switching devices and their duties here in this uh, table we can see the devices are here isolator earthing switch switch contactor circuit breaker and isolator is used for physical isolation after disconnection by cb right and how it operates the isolator it never open at no load condition no it also doesn't open at load condition even under short circuit condition it doesn't open also it doesn't close at no load load and short circuit condition but only it is useful for isolating the important equipments like circuit breaker or transformer or generator like this but it operates after the circuit breaker is operated right so earthing switch it close it, it it is closed while the sb equipment is isolated when the sb equipment is only isolated then only these earthing switches are closed it also not required for any kind of operation like opening and closing under no load condition load condition or short circuit condition right it is not required similarly switch the load switch it is used for switching on and off under healthy conditions only under normal load conditions 
right so therefore at no load condition it opens under load condition it also useful for opening but under short circuit condition these load switches are not being operated right because under short circuit condition there is high current flow in the circuit and it is important that your circuit breaker should operate similarly for closing operation also this switch is required at no load condition and lower condition not under the short circuit condition okay similarly the contactor which is used for automated switching operations it is used for different operations except the short circuit phenomena right and circuit breaker in fact plays very important role and it it is has to be able to successfully operate under all conditions under all conditions the circuit breaker needs to be operated whether it is load condition no load condition or isolate i for the purpose of isolation and it operates under no load condition load condition and during the short circuit or any kind of disturbance fault condition right so this is the basic of circuit breaker we covered in this lecture and uh, from next class we'll cover more we'll have two more classes and next two classes will cover the circuit breaker all all the uh, concepts of circuit breaker and different phenomena associated and the and the uh, mathematics behind the arc interruption and how it happens all these things we'll discuss in the next class okay so thank you very much for your kind attention thanks a lot